All right, Coach, welcome back. Coach, this is good. Yes. What, what, what are we looking at now? So in the, in the second part of this video, what we want to be able to take a look at is one more model that explains group development. Okay. So in the last model, if you remember, we looked at the uh, linear perspective of, of group development. Sure. So if, if you missed that video, maybe go back and take a look at uh, that model. That was Tuckman's model uh, that was a five-stage um, group development process. Okay. So in this model, instead of it being linear, where teams automatically progress from one stage to the next. Okay, yeah. uh, one of the other models is going to look at uh, it being a cycle. All right. Uh, so here in this model, we, we look at this as a life cycle model. So here we have the birth of a team. Nice. Uh, and then from there, we have a growth process. Uh, and then our final stage would be uh, the death process. Okay. So maybe let's look at our example that we were talking about of our team starting to come together. So here we have okay. uh, incoming recruits yep. uh, who are gonna be battling for positions. So right. in, that, in the very first few weeks of the, uh, of the semester, where do you think the team is going to be at in, in this process? I'm guessing it's gonna be here. It's gonna be relatively new, right? It's the birth process. You've got people Absolutely. that are coming together. Uh, they're getting to know each other. They're filling each other out. Absolutely. Uh, but also getting acclimated to their new environment. Mm -hmm. So just kind of even figuring out like, where do I eat? All of those other things. Like, where do I get my socks? Like laundry, all of those other fun things. Sure. So the team, yeah. and especially those new recruits, are in, in, in essence, they're in their infancy, aren't they? Okay. So, you know, the, the, everything is new to them. Sure. They're still trying to feel out the whole process. They're getting, they're getting used, to, uh, used to the school. They're getting used to their teammates. They're getting used to their class. There's a lot of new that's being thrown at them, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so from there, uh, the team, those, those new recruits, are going to go through a growth process. Sure. So what do you think might be some examples of uh, kind of those growing pains that our team might have to go through sure. after they get through that, that, that infancy stage, if you will? I think part of it is just kind of figuring out where they fit in on the team. So you're going to have maybe, Excellent point. you know, you've got, you know, example like the Fab Five when they first came in, you know, the Chris Weber and Juwan Howard, those guys came in and then they immediately started challenging mm -hmm. like the senior players, some of whom had won a national championship a couple of years before. Absolutely. And even though they beat them, mm -hmm. uh, I think they realized that, okay, we're, 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 we're dividing. There like we're go. coming in as freshmen mm -hmm. versus everybody else. And that what really wasn't working for them to becoming the team that they ultimately became Great. later on that season. Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing that's part of the process, Very right? Figuring out. Very true. Okay. Uh, great example of the growth process in the in the movie that Remember the Titans. Nice. Okay. So when the team first starts coming together and they're and they're working through all the all the segregation and the team yeah. being integrated with one another, yeah. uh, coach takes them away for training camp. Sure. Okay. And there's some really powerful scenes in that movie of the mm -hmm. team, you know, being integrated with one another. So they actually have to room with one another in the in, in the dorms. Yep. Uh, and they have to grow with one another in that process. Coach sure. gives them different different assignments. I'd have to interview you, you have to interview me. Sure. And then we had to then present that to the entire team at, at lunchtime. So uh, so remember the Titans, that growth process is occurring by the team just continuing to be around one another. Uh, uh, maybe they're given specific tasks, but then also being able to just play around one, uh, you know, play with one another uh, out on the field, yeah. uh, you know, in practice, they're growing together. So they're recognizing where my strengths might be, where your strengths might Absolutely. be as a team, where we need probably some improvement. Sure. Uh, as well as the coaching staff. Absolutely. Right. You had Coach Boone and you had the, uh, the defensive coordinator that are trying to figure out, okay, where should I take the lead? Where should you take the lead? Because you have two head coaches coming together, Absolutely. That now one of them has to be the assistant. So coach. this group development process is not only for the athletes, but it's for the coaching okay. staff as well that you can see that'll, that'll go through some of that, uh, some of that development. Okay. Uh, but certainly, you know, as we talked about before, yeah. you know, in this process, it's very important that, that the athletes know their roles. Sure. So not everybody's gonna be a starter, are they? Sure, no. So if we're battling for that same position, yeah. you know, if we're both battling for that wide receiver position, in that growth process, I mean, a good coaching staff can help the players better understand what their role is and so maybe you are the starter yeah. and maybe I'm that that key player who comes in uh, as that wide receiver position in, in, in key uh, key situations during the game right. you know third and short maybe okay, that's, so that's my role that's coming up there okay absolutely so the players will learn how to I mean, how to take advantage of those roles in that growth process sure. 
So This has got to be challenging, I think, pretty pertinent to what you have with a lot of these one-and-done schools in basketball. You would think, you the, absolutely. The Kentuckys and the Kansases where they come together and they know that they're only going to have Good a point. of their players for like a year. Right. So how do they come together relatively quickly? How do they go from birth to growing as a sure. team and then realizing that come a month absolutely. from now, two or three of them are going to be gone. That's a good point because yeah. if you look at a, a typical life cycle sure. of maybe an incoming class of freshmen, yeah. uh, you know, those, those group of players are going to be together in this cycle for what, four, maybe five years. Yeah. But yes, with some interesting developments uh, at, in some of the sports, you know, like NCAA basketball, like you're talking yeah. about, they could be, this cycle could be a one year process. Okay. So very interesting how coaches kind of kind of map that out in their mind and think about uh, how the team comes together through that infancy stage, sure. how they go through that growth. That makes sense. Uh, you know, and that could be on a yearly basis. It could be on four years. It could uh, it could be anywhere in between. But certainly, one of the I mean, one of the things that uh, this life cycle model points out, maybe that some of the other models haven't pointed to, is the eventual death of the of the team process. Sure. Uh, and that is a very normal part of the uh, of the team process. And because it is, you know, let's maybe think about some things that a coach could do uh, to help the team prepare for this. Because I think coaches do a great job, mm -hmm. and players oftentimes do a wonderful job of preparing for the team coming together. Yeah. Do a great job of helping them grow, right? But what about this process? Sure. The team eventually going through that death stage. Now, we're not literally talking about the death process, are we? No, you know, no. Right Hopefully not in the team. But, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but that eventual breakup of, of the team, sure. that, that player that's moving on, yeah. or that incoming class of freshmen that are now seniors. Sure. So what's maybe uh, an idea or an example can you think of that maybe a coach could, could do over the course of that life cycle of a team to help those players prepare for that eventual uh, and process. So the players that are getting ready to leave, maybe then focusing on transitions. How are you mm -hmm. preparing for the next stage of your life? Uh, how are you thinking about like maybe going on to professional levels mm -hmm. or even in terms of education or other areas in which they can potentially transition from seeing themselves only as an athlete to, to another individual? That's a great point about the whole identity piece of it. So, you know, if, it, if an athlete solely sees themselves, you know, if, if I, you know, you ask that individual, you know, who are you? They say, well, you know, I'm Tim, I'm a basketball player. Sure, yeah. You know, if all they see themselves is that identity, that role of being a basketball player, us as the coaching staff, we need to be able to help Tim see what that next stage of life does look like. What is he doing for, for his career? So I really like that key point about helping those players mm -hmm. I, on, in that group be able to see themselves as a, from a broader perspective. Nice. Anything else come to mind of what we might be able to do to help, uh, I mean, help that team through that, I mean, through that end process? Well, sometimes just to, to put an end to the season. I know that there's, there's teams, I think the New Orleans Saints had a, a Louisiana um, burial, a ceremonial thing to kind of say, we had a great season, but that season sure. is now done. Like it is, and now we, how are we gonna move back to mm -hmm. like the rebirth? Of our, right. of our team. So having some way to, I mean, to honor, I mean, to commemorate, uh, sure. to celebrate sure. at times the end of a season. Yeah. You know, many high school and college programs do an end of the season banquet. Nice. What a great opportunity makes, yeah, for, good, yeah. uh, for the team to celebrate the accomplishments sure. and then to re also kind of refocus for that next cycle around of what the goals are. So in this process, just to, just to review real quick, mm -hmm. uh, in one of the other videos, we looked at a linear perspective. We looked sure. at Tuckman's model. In this model, we've looked at uh, it being as a cycle uh, in the process of uh, from birth to growth to death. Yeah. Um, and then as well, we're going to be able to look at one more model that's going to look at it from what we're going to call a pendular perspective. Okay. So uh, before we move on Absolutely. here, what are some potential drawbacks? So we, you did a nice job talking about, in Tuckman's model, maybe mm -hmm. some of the strengths and maybe some of the areas that needed improvement. For sure. What would you say for this one? What have been some of the detractors to this one? Absolutely. So I, I'd probably say, you know, even though we call this a cycle, okay. uh, this cycle, I certainly, I looks at I mean, group development from the standpoint that every team would naturally flow through this process. Sure. Um, you know, and because of that, uh, 
because there is a natural end to the process. Mm -hmm. Well, our example of you know what happens when a player comes on the team and they leave one year, sure. whereas the rest of the team moves on and they're together for three or uh, four more years. Okay. So is that a natural ending process to to this particular group? Does that particularly fit? That you know, in in yeah. the, in that case, it, it maybe maybe it doesn't. Okay. Um, in this process as well, it is slightly linear in the, in the sense of you do progress from one stage to the next and it feeds okay. back through, but it also doesn't I have any way to regress. Fair enough. Okay, so if a team is, for example, in that growth stage, mm -hmm. can they kind of slip back into their infancy, if you will? According to this cyclical model, a team would not be able to I regress or I slip back. You're always progressing. You're always aging and maturing okay. as a team. So those might be two critiques of the model. Okay. So where are we going to go from here? What's the what's the last one that we're going to be talking about? Absolutely. So as mentioned, we've uh, we've kind of talked about the linear model. Okay. This was our cyclical model, our life cycle model, and then we're going to finish up with uh, focusing on a pendular model. All so right. a model that's going to look in a back and forth. Uh, and might uh, give us uh, some ways to build on these two models, some of the disadvantages. Uh, but I think a good key point to make before we finish up about any of these group development models mm -hmm. is it's not that one is any is 100% accurate. Sure. Uh, you know there are some strengths and there are some limitations to each of these models. So we'll just keep those in mind as we continue discussing. All right. Great. Sounds good. Let's go. Good job. All right. Thanks. <laughs>